This is the complete end game defending tutorial you guys asked for on FC24. As you guys can see here, a screenshot will appear. 40% of you guys voted defending. So I'm bringing it to you guys. But first things first, guys, you guys need to stop chasing this ball. I'm reminding you guys because a lot of you guys do it. Forget about it. Let the old habits die in FC24 and let's prepare ourselves for FC25. Let's get straight into the video and forget about it, ball. When you're playing the game, I'll explain why when you're defending. What's the reason? Let's get straight into it. Guys, listen to me here very carefully. I want to teach you guys something totally different. What's going to change your gameplay forever. Look here, guys. Your imagination. Always make sure you use it when you're playing in-game. This year will revolutionize your gameplay. Like Albert Einstein says, I will always repeat myself. Remember, I made a video on triangular patterns. Here's it here on the screen and I spoke about using imaginary lines to form triangular patterns. Now what I'm saying in defense, if you want a solid structure, let's just take, okay, that's going to be my two center backs. Okay, so you want a solid structure. Then there's my CDM, here's my left wing, now my left back, then my right back. Say if you want a solid structure, what you should do, like in a video, you'll see there's right the way I'm right stick switching and I'm trying to form, you know, solid walls. You should create these imaginary lines. Let me just take a black color. In a game, you should create imaginary lines. As you guys can see, look, to form a strong, solid structure. Why I'm saying create imaginary lines? Imagine if, if you can't imagine, just imagine it. Imagine if you don't, don't, do not form these solid uh, structures in your defense. What's going to happen? Your opponents and they have a lot of space to exploit. Guys, all I'm trying to teach you guys, I'm trying to teach you guys to open up your mind, use your imagination. Like, let's take, for example, here, for example. Okay, let's say my two center backs, my one center back is here, this player is here. Okay, now the, this player is here. Now I'm against two players. Now, what if I just run after the ball? Obviously, my opponent's going to have space to exploit. He'll do left stick dribbling. He'll get past me. Now, let's imagine I don't do that. I stand my ground. I stand my ground. I'm jo a busy jockeying here. A slow jockeying here near the box. At the moment, what I'm doing, I'm, uh, I'm applying pressure on the ball holder. Look here. I'm applying pressure on the ball holder, this guy. And at the same time, I'm covering the passing lane so my opponent won't be able to, uh, you know, I've passed to this player Yeah, as you guys can see. See, everything evolves imagination. Like with the triangular patterns, I spoke about it. Now, what I'm saying in your defense, imagine you don't know how to right stick, right stick switch properly. What's the implications of that if you don't right stick switch properly? Imagine you don't know how to second man press properly. What's the implementation uh, implications of that? You know what I'm saying? Imagine you don't know how to do passive and aggressive defending. What's the implications of that? It's all about using your imagination. Like everything in the world was formed from our imagination. If you can imagine things in the game, I'm telling you guys, you can improve. You know, just by using your imagination, guys. You know, and if you don't use it more often in the game, you won't excel with anything. Like if you think about it when you defending, if you don't form a solid structure, what's going to happen? Just use your imagination, create imaginary lines in your mind and put it in a game like here. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, basically drawing here. Uh, create these solid lines so you'll be able to, you know, form a well-structured defense. I'm telling you guys, if you can 
unlock your imagination in this game. You develop superpowers what you never ever thought was there just by unlocking your imagination and using it all the time in game. I'm telling you guys, you will go places. This is something new that I thought about and I'm gonna speak about it more often. You know what I'm saying? Anyways guys, straight to the examples. This was the interruption, cause why I wanna open up you, uh, all of you who are watching the video and open up your minds, including I'm opening up my own mind right now, talking about something I just thought about just right now. So I said, while it's fresh in my mind, I want to share with you guys this year, you know, straight into the video. So remember guys, your imagination will take you everywhere. Logic will take you from A to B. So always use your imagination in game guys. Guys, I'm sorry to repeat myself, but just imagine when you overcommit, when you bring plays out of position, what's going to happen? Gaps, when you don't defend properly, you're leaving gaps, what's going to happen? So guys, it's all about that imagination. It's by time we get it going, and it's by time, we, you know what, we move our imagination to go places in this game. Because let me tell you, tax and all of them use it. So it's by time we make sure we use it. And the guys who's underdogs, it's time for you guys to come up in this game and revolutionize your gameplay. Like if you take certain teams in the World Cup, you watch the 2022 World Cup. Remember when Argentina lost against, I think so it was Saudi Arabia. That's an underdog team. Remember when uh, the USA, I don't know who they won against. I think so it was Spain. The USA, USA knocked out Spain. And remember, USA is not the top a team they never were a top country in soccer but look they're coming up so it's by time the guys who's watching this video it's by time you come up in this game you know what i'm saying and it's nothing special tax and all of them have it's just they focus on the fundamentals they use their imagination they think ahead in game so it's by time guys you guys start leveling up in this game and use your imagination. I will repeat myself. Okay guys, before we get into explaining the gameplay, look here, the player you need to get. You don't need to get Virgil van Dijk, but someone similar to him. Height needs to be a tall player to stop that, prevent those other players from scoring with those headers. So you need to get someone 6.4. Okay, that's the height. Then I'll explain to you the play styles after that. Okay guys, here's the four play styles you guys need to look at. You need to make sure the player has a power header play style, the jockey play style, which is very important. The power header will help your player to head the ball away from Haaland, etc. All the tall players. Anticipate, you want to also make sure your player has this play style. You'll be able to tackle the ball easily. That aggressive tackles when you press a press circle on PlayStation. Then Bruiser, shoulder tackle. Your player will launch a shoulder tackle against other player. He'll like uh, put his body in between and try and, you know what, uh, push his body in your, your, your opponent and get the ball. So these four play styles considered, it's very important. Now let's get into the next segment of this video. Okay, let's quickly discuss settings here. It always needs to be competitive when you're playing online. Now let's move on. To the next segment. Yeah, it's a big one. Advanced defending. It must be on that. Do not turn it on tactical fan defending. Because reason why you won't be able to perform a shoulder tackle by pressing X. So keep it on advanced defending. It's much more better to use. If you're not used to it, get used to it and learn it. Let's move on to the next one. Auto switching. It must be a set on air balls and loose balls. It's better. Majority of people is using this here. If you have it on manual, it's gonna be more difficult. So keep it on air balls and loose balls. Next one, right stick switching. It must be on classical. Don't put it on player rotation or other settings. Keep it on classical. Yeah, right stick switching reference point. This indicates where you need to switch from there. I have it on player relative. 
I made a video on it, I'll put it in a description link. So keep it on player relative, don't put it on ball relative. Because ball relative, people who recommend use ball relative. It's ball relative is not good. Use it on keep it on player relative. Your yeah, right stick switching sensitivity. I, I had it on four. If you look at my previous video, now I change it to two. I'll recommend switch between zero and four and just test it. But I'm keeping it on two because I feel comfortable. Next one here, here's a big one. Next player switch indicator. A uh, next a uh, player switching, I mean. This is when you L1 switch, it will choose the player who you L1 switch with. I kept it on closest to ball because I want to select that player. So I'll recommend keep it on closest to ball. Goal side, no. Classical, no. Closest to ball. And you, you, and you basically use this in combination with right stick switching. Okay guys, I'm going to explain the four different jockey techniques. These are pro jockey techniques. And I'm going to explain how to use them and when to use them in what situations. Okay, listen to me very carefully. The first jockey technique is going to be the accelerate and brake technique. Accelerate being R2 slash RT on Xbox. Brake button being L2 slash LT on Xbox. Okay, look here. When you use this, when your opponent is far from you, like see, there's my opponent. I'm gonna run to, uh, uh, towards the empty space. Where is he gonna be? Look, run towards the empty space with R2, then L2. I'm gonna break when I'm close to him, then mirror him. As you guys can see, so this is when you want to use this here. Okay, but listen to me here very carefully. You see, when you're mirroring your opponent, you want to make sure you mirror your opponent in circular motion. See, like this here. Look how my player is moving. See, circular motion. See, you don't want to do this here. You can even hear a clicking sound. So, that's the accelerate and brake technique. Okay, next. Wait, the accelerate and brake technique. You guys can use it when you want to uh, like anticipate where your opponent's going to pass the ball, then you run there. The accelerate and brake technique, you can even use it inside the box. Okay, hear me out. The next jockey technique, the slow jockey technique, you hold on L2 slash LT on Xbox. When you use this, is when you in 1v1 situations with your opponent like this here, you use it, then you press the tackle button on PlayStation, which is circle. See, 1v1 situations and also inside a box. See, I'm using the slow jockey. See, so this is when you use a slow jockey. So that's the one, the, the second technique, what I'm talking about. Okay? Then the other jockey technique will be the fast jockey. The fast jockey. Let's say you hold on L2 and R2 on PlayStation. Then on Xbox it will be LB and RB. See, this year you use this jockey when you're outside a box. Look how he's moving. As you guys can see, he can move much more faster. So you guys see, look at my controller, look how he's moving. But you guys don't use this inside a box. Listen to me carefully. Okay, so that's the third jockey technique. Then the fourth jockey technique is similar to the accelerate and brake technique. But this one here, you hold on L2 and R2. Okay, slash RT and LT on Xbox. Okay, you use this here. But then all of a sudden when your opponent's close by, then you let go of R2 slash RT. And look, he'll perform. He, he like stands still. Look, I'm holding down both bumpers, let, letting go, as you guys can see. So you guys see. And you guys can also use it in this way. See, hold on L2 and then just tap R2. Look. 
So you guys see, you murder, murder your opponent. Look, murder my opponent when he's close by, let go of R2. As you guys can see, Balasia takes a little bit of practice murdering, letting go of R2, press the tackle button. I mean, so you guys can use it in that kind of way. So those are the four jockey techniques. What? I shared with you guys. Now let's get straight into gameplay and examples and I'll show you how I use this jockey techniques to the best of my ability and I'll show you guys when to use it and when not to use it in game. Let's get straight into it. Guys, here's an example here of this footage. This footage is from Meta Mike's gameplay. Check out his channel, go subscribe to his channel. He uploads content on which are the best cards to get in a game for a reasonable price and also he uploads tutorials sometimes anyways guys here we are see this player here is in the white meta mics in the black i just want to show you guys here the example see this player look what a defensive mistake he makes here there's still other stuff i want to get into after this example look he should have taken a touch this way you see but instead he doesn't and he bumps into Meta Mike, and that's when he loses the ball. Now watch. Look, he's switching. Okay, there's good. But look, he's chasing after the ball, as you can see. And I always mention that in my videos. Do not chase after the ball. Rather focus on where the ball's going to be. But instead, he's doing that there, and look. Look, he's not even jockeying properly. Look here, he should have gone for the tackle and win the ball already, but he's not. Anyway, look. Lapstick dribbling, look. A Meta Max basically going around him. And look how he... Uh, yeah, have a look how he's panicking, switching. This is also what I mentioned in my Patreon Academy. My, my coaching academy. You do not want to panic switch. Look, again he's switching there. He's unsure of when to be passive and when to be aggressive. And look, that's a goal. As you guys can see, let's just go back. Look, they lose the ball in the wrong area. He's not uh, having the knowledge on when to be a passive, when to be aggressive. He's panicking, switching one way. And looks like he, he's not aware of when to press the tackle button. You see, all of these little things play a huge role. As you can see, he conceded there. Now let's get straight into my examples i want to show you guys how i defend and what i do in these kind of scenarios and situations let's get straight into the next examples guys okay guys here we are i got some defensive examples of how i am defending here and this thing here what you see this here is an eye tracker if you guys want me to make more videos like this showing the eye tracker where i uh, or you guys can see a process my thoughts throughout the game where am i looking etc okay let's go here i want you guys to see there look i'm applying pressure with dropper there look i'm switching okay look i'm running back because i want to cover this player here and also cover the space i don't want my opponent to get in easily and i want to make sure i suffocate my opponent okay as you guys can see look covering that space there the AI is pressing for me with George Best. He's a little bit out of position, but you see Roberto Carlos is there. Now my player is switching. As you can see, look. Situational awareness there. I'm aware this player is around. So I switch with Van Dyke. As you guys can see. And look, my eyes are looking there. From there, running back, as you guys can see, and look, I'm running back, I'm looking at two places at once. I'm running back here with Mr. Virgil van Dijk, as you guys can see, and look, the eye tracker is looking here. Because why? I'm focusing, you see my eyes are, I'm running that side, but at the same time, I'm looking here. And, because why? I'm making sure, you know, I don't want to give my opponent the option for him to pass to this player here. So you guys see, this now is peripheral vision. This is how your vision should be. You should be looking everywhere around the pitch. You should basically, I'll tell you the, the main stuff. You, 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 you like basically like should like 
Look at empty space number one. I always talk about that. The runners, you know, it's very important because remember, there's 11 players on the pitch. Look now. I'm tracking back. I'm applying pressure on him, as you guys can see there. Look, goalkeeper got it. Yeah, here's now another example. Look, he's passing to that player there. Switch to George Best. See, covering the empty space there, I'm, um, with that player there, I'm, I switch to that player I'm covering, this player here, as you guys can see, I'm covering this player here, so I'm not giving him an easy chance to, you know what, exploit space and you know what, give him other options. Hey, look, look, I'm switching back and forth, there, I switch to Virgil van Dijk, I'm watching that guy, as you can see, I had a second man press for a while, look, he's going there, he tries to shoot. Goalkeeper saves it. Yeah, look, I want to show you guys this defensive mistake. Look here. Yeah. This player here yeah, has the ball. Look to whom my opponent is switching to. Look at the space. Look how free is dropper. And look at the empty space. Look. If he, his switching was up to a certain level, he could have quickly switched to this player here, yeah, cover drop by in the space but instead you never do that that's how you see right stick switching plays a vital role in this game you need to know how to right stick switch and when to right stick switch you guys see have a look look free because look, look he switched basically too too late look he should have been switching now to to this player here, the center back. But instead, he never look. Dropa got a ball, and then he switch. Look now, when it's too late, and I got that goal, as you guys can see. Some more examples. Look here, yeah. I'm actually, you see, always I want to tell you guys, please, please make sure when you when it's kickoff, make sure you strike a drop back and offside trap. When you use the offside trap, listen to me very carefully here. Yeah. Use the offside trap when your opponent's giving you his back, number one. Then you use the offside trap so your players can push up. Number two, when your opponent's recycling, use the offside trap. Okay, I am just using the offside trap. But okay, striker drop back, I use it a little late. As you guys can see, look, I'm doing the opposite. I was doing the opposite there. They had a switch in time. Trying to defend, as you guys can see. Look, there, I'm using the run button. Then, all of a sudden, I'm using the slow jockey and second man press at the same time, as you guys can see. I'm trying to kill two birds with one stone, like I'll always say. But then, there, look, okay, now my center, my uh, right back is second man pressing. I managed to get a ball. As you guys can see, look. Second man press, look, switch to the center back, I'm second man pressing, you see you kill two birds with one stone, you switch to one player, listen to me very carefully, you switch to one player, you're covering that space, look here, I'm covering that space here, this space, so he can't exploit this space, Van Dijk is there, and at the same time, look there, second man pressing, the ball holder. So, I don't give him a chance easily to exploit the space and you know what, uh, get the goal. They look, second man press, I managed to get a ball. They look, killing two birds with one stone again. Switching to the center back, sec second man pressing with George Best. As you guys can see, and look how my eyes are going everywhere and looking. They have managed to intercept the ball. Also another thing, you uh, like you see here, uh, let's just go back, as you can see, look how I'm switching back and forth, I'm trying to read my opponent's moves, you see a big word I'll tell you guys is interception, no, 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 not interception, anticipation, anticipation, it's a big word, you must watch increment details like little details smallest details watch where your opponent what's his movement what's his next move try to read him before he's gonna make a move and that's when you'll intercept the ball easily like look here okay i got the ball with van dyke yeah i just want to show you where's this other example hey look there my opponent look 
see. I, I could really basically read what he's going to do. Okay, look here. He has a ball with that player there. Now, look, he passed to that player there. And before I knew it, I did a uh, switch. As you guys can see, if you look at my controller, or did the AI switch for me? Okay, look there, the L1 switch, because I already saw, if you guys paid attention to my controller, the L1 switch, and then I managed to intercept the ball. So anticipation is very important, it's a key role in this game. You need to read your opponent before he is making a move. There, look, I got a ball with Van Dyke. There, I think what I do? Did I right stick switch? No, L1 switch. You guys see, L1 switching and right stick switching, it needs to be in combination. See there, I'm looking, I'm not only looking at a ball holder. As you guys can see, look where my eyes are paying attention to. My eyes are looking here. That's why I'm checking out this runner here. You see, my eyes are paying there. My eyes aren't only paying attention to the ball holder. Like I say, like I made previous videos before, I'll put the link of the other defending tutorials where I, the other defending tutorial where I spoke about and I made examples where I chased the ball and what happens, implementation, uh, implementation, uh, what is, uh, implementation, implementations, I don't know how to pronounce that word, Imp okay, but anyways, implications, implications, I mean, <laughs> the imp uh, what happened when you chase the ball, the implications, sorry about that, guys, okay, but as you can see, look how I'm switching, and look how my eyes are moving, see, um, my eyes are constantly moving, as you guys can see, the eye tracker was there, and all of a sudden, it's there, because why? My eyes are watching the empty space also, as you guys can see. Look, I'm pushing down. Look, I switched there all of a sudden. I think that's a right stick switch. You watch my controller. Okay, now it, it looks like it's a... Let's just see. Now it looks like it's a L1 switch. Let's just go back. When I switch to Van Dyke. Okay, no, it's a right stick switch. And yeah, I switch to him. From there, I, yeah, that looks like L1 switch to Van Dyke. And then I managed to get a ball. So you guys see right stick switching and L1 switching plays a big role. Yeah, look, going back. As you guys can see, I'm trying to be passive and aggressive. Managed to get a ball here. Yeah. As you guys can see, running back into the empty space. I'm not chasing the ball, as you guys can see. I think so, yeah. Let's just see what happens here. The opponent almost scored. Okay, as you guys can see, look there. A striker drop back and offside traps. I'm making sure I always use in kickoff. Yeah, look, offside trap. Look, going back and forth. Look, uh, look here. Here's a good, good example. So you guys can see. If you guys can switch like us here, look here. Look, I did switch there because why? I did switch there with George Best. If you guys, uh, this is a topic, uh, typically a good example. Watch also my controller, how I right stick switch. Look, I right stick switch with George Best. Look where my controller is pointed. I right stick switch. Why? I'm covering this player here, as you guys can see. As a player here, I'm covering. As you guys can see, this player here. So anyway, I right stick switch with George Best. Then look, I'm second man pressing at the same time. Look, because why I'm second man pressing? Because this player here is covering this space. So, if my opponent passed to this player here, if my opponent passed here, he won't have all this space to exploit, you see. Because why? 
I'm second man pressing, but let's play there, as you guys can see. And there, look, I switched to that player there. What I did, I think so that was the L1 switch. Look, applying pressure. Look, yes, it's the L1 switch if you look at my controller. And look, I'm switching back and forth. I'm trying to form a wall, as you guys can see. And look, I'm giving him no options. Look, I recover there quickly. Again, I'm switching there, I'm covering there. Again, sw switching there, Co covering this passing lane here. And look here, just look at us switching. Watch my controller, watch our L1 switch. And just for a few minutes, how I keep this guy busy, just watch. I'm not going to uh, stop the video too much. Look how I'm switching back and forth. Right stick switching, L1 switching, covering the space. And look, for this, if you can, guys can defend like this all the time. I'm telling you guys, you'll give your opponent a hard time. Look, he doesn't know where to go. I'm trying to form a wall. Look, I don't switch like this all the time. Because sometimes the game makes me mentally tired. But for those of you who are young, and you got the strength and energy in you to play like this all the time, do it. You guys can reach the pro level. Look how I'm keeping him busy. Look, switching back and forth there. Switch, I managed to intercept the ball. But if you guys took something from there, if you guys look properly, it was right stick switching in combination with L1 switching. We can rewatch it again from kickoff. And if you look at how many minutes it was, let's just go back. Just want to show you guys again. It all started off with kickoff. Here's it, yeah. I'm gonna speak and watch my controller both at the same time. If you guys can defend like us, guaranteed you guys will go places. Look how I'm switching back and forth. Right stick switching, L1 switching, covering the empty spaces. As you guys can see, it's non-stop. I'm forming a wall. And, and I'm trying to be passive and aggressive at the same time. I'm trying to give my opponent no space. I'm suffocating him, all the space, I'm covering his second options, all of that. As you guys can see, look, little bit of outside trap, striker drop back. Look how I'm switching back and forth, running into that space. Running forward, running back. And look for how many minutes, look. I'm just keeping him busy, he doesn't know where to go, look. He's passing back and forth because I'm closing all these options. So you guys see, you guys want to defend like that. All the time, guys. All the time. And look, my eyes are moving. See, my eyes are watching there. They, then you see, all of a sudden, my eyes are watching there, the empty space. I'm not only focusing on the ball. And there, I managed to intercept the ball. Yeah, I think so. I made a, a little bit of a mistake. That's why I considered the goal. Yeah, look. I'm second man pressing with my center back, which I spoke about in my other second man press video. Look, yeah. Instead, I should have select Virgil van Dijk, right stick switch. Cover this passing lane here, this player here. See, I could have select Virgil van Dijk. Cover this area, run back, but instead I never do that. And look, I selected the wrong player. This is not the player I supposed to select. I supposed to select Virgil van Dijk, but I never. And look what ends up happening here, see, and I'm not even tracking the runner. And look, I ended up conceding a goal. So that's how you guys see. This year, I just want to explain, because I know some people on YouTube have funny comments. Because I read on other YouTuber, uh, he's uh, basically his uh, comment section. They said, this coach needs to be coached. You see, sometimes people don't realize the videos what we make is for educational purposes. Like, get mistake. That's to teach you guys to track runners. Do not make silly, stupid mistakes like how I did there. You see, because that can cost you a goal, a, a, the game. And that's a, a goal. And that's what cost me the game. Maybe you're entering a tournament, a pro tournament, and you do stupid mistakes like how I did. It's going to cost you. So the purpose of that, why I brought that footage to show you, you know what, I'm not always perfect. Sometimes I defend well, sometimes I don't defend well. See, so he's trying to do a cutback. He never scored there. See, yeah, uh, corners I'll always select the tall player, right? Six switch to Virgil van Dijk, as you guys can see. If I go back, 
Virgil van Dijk, basically, if you guys look here, he headed the ball out. Yeah, look. Uh, I'm, a, I'm trying to be passive aggressive covering passing lanes as you guys can see switching there back and forth look switching to my center back see also look how my eyes are moving I'm not focusing on the ball because remember if you focus on the ball too much you're gonna over commit and everything they look using the slow jockey inside the box and second man press at the same time they are intercepted the ball they strike a drop back and the offside trap I'm using there yeah, as you can see he's getting frustrated he's trying to score there but he can't there yeah, as you guys can see switching back and forth using second man press yeah I think so I made a mistake no there yeah, as you guys can see look I'm switching back and forth see why I switch back and forth like yeah look there I have the ball with my center, the, I'm, I'm switching with my right back, then I'm switching with my center back. Because why, you see when you second man press, uh, the ball like, uh, uh, the player goes basically close to the ball. And then you can L1 switch, to, so you can be in control. Look, I'm trying to apply pressure on him, and then look, look, quickly I switch with Virgil van Dijk and I manage to get a ball. As you guys can see. In this game you need to switch a lot, but you need to know when to switch to certain players and what to do in certain scenarios there I believe Virgil van Dijk should have win the ball let's see did I even try to attempt to press the tackle button there as you can see look I'm using a slow jockey and look I'm moving in circular motion trying to predict, uh, predict where is he gonna go there I did press the tackle button but I must timed it as you guys can see tackles it's very important to make sure you don't miss time your tackles, especially inside the box with your center backs. Because look, there he almost uh, had a chance on goal and he almost scored. There the keeper saved it. I got some more footage on also on tacklings. When I get into that on how I tackle like a pro, I'm going to show you guys. The second man pressing. Okay, I managed to retrieve the ball over there. They look tracking the runner, going back, switching with my center back, covering this player here. Again, uh, switching to my right back, trying to apply him on pressure. Quickly switching back to my center back. See here, yeah, again, I was lucky. As you guys can see, he almost scored again. That's why I missed judgment. There, look, I should have. Go in more towards the side here. Because you see where's the ball placed. The ball's placed more towards that side. I should have go more towards the side. Try and run. Then hit the tackle button to try get a ball. Be a little bit aggressive. You see when you be aggressive. When your opponent's close by you. But I never. And I almost conceded a goal. As you guys can see. Yeah also I'm going to show you guys. Look here. The formations. See this is my formation. You always need to put it on pause, check your opponent's formation. Yeah, my opponent is moving, is using a 4, 2, 4. Because why? This will give you a chance to see, you know, uh, how this formation works and how to defend against this formation. That's why it's important to always put it on pause and check your the formations half time or, you know, during the first half. Yeah, look. Going back, covering the passing lane. There, as you guys can see, I, I reapply our... Have a look there. Look, I'm applying pressure with my left back. Then after that, they're switching to my, cent uh, to my CDM, or my center mid. From there, I'm right stick switching to my center back and I'm applying pressure with my left back then again switching back to my left back which was a mistake i shouldn't have but then there i switch back to my center back see the goalkeeper managed to save the ball you see at least so here as you guys can see corners 
I always switch to my tall player Virgil van Dijk and I try to see you know where is he going to kick and who I need to defend against because remember headers are overpowered so there look I'm trying to watch his movement they are just lucky they managed to save the the goalkeeper saved it yeah I think so I made a mistake Let's just see the mistake. See ya. See, I don't know why my player is a little bit out of position, my left back. But yeah, I should have run more diagonally. And look, no one, see ya. No, no one is covering this player, yeah. As you guys can see. I could have, like maybe like jockey and block his space here. You, you know what I'm saying? Or, or like maybe run in a certain way diagonally, block his space, and also maybe right stick switch quickly to this player, let this player run here to cover this passing, uh, uh, to cover this player here in his passing lane. But instead, I never do that. And look, he has space to pass to that player. Now, what I should have do here, I should have quickly right stick switch to my center back, the other center back. And the center back should have go here to cover this area here and basically cover this space here as you guys can see but instead i never do that and look what end up happening but wait i managed to win the ball over as you guys can see i think so this was just pure luck if i look at it okay 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 i see he's going there I, I push my just trying to understand here yeah, what happened okay, he's coming I'm going down the side with my controller now okay okay my controller's position in the right way I'm going down this way he is about to receive the ball see that's why movement of your opponent is very important he's about to receive the ball I'm going more towards this side now I switch back to Virgil van Dijk and I managed to get a ball Okay, as you guys can see, you need to watch the little details. Watch your opponent, where is he, where is he moving? That's very important when, when you defend. As you guys can see, look. Switching back and forth, applying pressure on him, I managed to win the ball over. In anticipation, I got it. Yeah, look, what a silly mistake. I'm going to show you guys, do not make mistakes like this. Look there, I got a ball. Look here with Virgil van Dijk. I won the ball over. Look here. I, instead, I should have quickly, you know, press the run button and go this side or else. Look, there I have the ball. I should have power up my uh, pass button fully. But instead, I never... And I just look at the power amount. Look. Little Luki managed to get a ball. So these type of mistakes don't make these type of mistakes. Look, he managed to score. So you guys see. Guys, I got more examples. This is not the end, guys. Okay, here are more examples. Watch basically how I defend against this opponent right here. Look, he switched to that player. See, I'm trying to run diagonally. I'm watching where that player is going with a ball. Yeah, I think so. I conceded because I never. No, wait, the goalkeeper saved it. Okay. Yeah, look. Always strike a drop back and offside trap. There, look. I managed to get a ball. As you can see. Activated offside trap. All the players pushed up. There, as you guys, guys can see, our second man pressing. And now I switch to that player there. Then I quickly see my AI see because of the upside trap. Look, this player here is applying pressure. And look, I managed to get a ball over. Yeah, anticipation. If you guys look, anticipation. Look, I knew I was in a pass to him. Anticipation again. I'm tracking the runner here. As you guys can see this. I'm tracking. 
Let's play here, yeah, as you guys can see. Okay, and Virgil van Dyke is the one tracking him. Then there, I think so. I managed to get a ball. Yeah, I just want to show you. He's my opponent's defensive mistake. Look, he's like overcommitting. Look, instead of tracking back and covering this area here, so George Best won't exploit the space. He run after the ball, and look what happens. You don't want to defend, I guess. See. But, uh, let me just try to explain to you guys and show you. Look, George West is here. If I had to do, like, maybe a reverse elastico, I think so I'll be able to get into this pocket of space. Look how much of space he's giving me. Look, yeah. How much of space I got. You don't want to defend like us and overcome it. But instead I went, I passed back. And look, here look, I always make sure I select the tall player. I headed the ball out. But it's not safe completely. Now again, I have to defend. As you guys can see, look, second man press comes in very handy. Sometimes you can use second man press in this kind of way. I explained in my video, you always select the player from the inside and a player from the outside will second man press. But look, I selected a player from the inside. I'm second man pressing, look the player. Inside is second man pressing and look, he's covering this player here, as you guys can see. This player here is covering this player here. So look, I'm covering that passing lane now. I switch to that player there. As you can see, second man pressing, applying a little pressure. See, empty space is the most important thing. See, now I'm second man pressing. Where this player here? I switch to that player there. Second man pressing with that player. As you can see, I'm covering this passing lane. So you see, second man press also, you need to use it in the correct way. Look, applying pressure. There, look, I managed to get a ball. As you guys can see, I quickly look, second man pressing, look how it's helping. Then I quickly, I the L1 switch, I managed to get a ball over. Then look, why I'm constantly switching from player to player? I'm trying to form a wall. As I spoke to you guys in that early on in the video, trying to form a wall. You know, you must create this imaginary lines like in your mind as I spoke about. Look, I switched to that player because why? I'm covering. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm covering this passing lane. So this player here won't exploit this area here. You guys see. So that's basically what I'm doing. Then there I switched to that player there. Trying to get a ball, yeah, yeah, I switched to, let me just change the thickness of this thing. See, yeah, I switched to this player, yeah, why? To cover this space. To cover this space and to cover this player, yeah, as you guys can see. So you guys need to create this imaginary lines, guidelines to help you guys. There. Anticipation, I managed to get a ball over. Yeah, defending again, I wanna tell you guys, defending starts the moment you lose the ball, not only by the box. Yeah, look, I'm running back now, I switched to Virgil van Dijk, anticipation. I knew he was gonna come here. So Virgil van Dijk, I'll make sure I don't overcommit. Virgil van Dijk is protecting this area. Cause imagine I overcommit and Virgil van Dijk comes here and he beats me with a left stick dribbling. Then, He'll have all of this empty space to exploit. So I don't want to give him that space. So I stand my ground. And look, going back, look, I'm second man pressing with Virgil van Dijk. I told you guys, never ever second man press with your center backs. But sometimes I do accidentally. Look, Virgil van Dijk's not out of position. And look, this player here is covering this player here, as you guys can see. Remember, I always will repeat this to you guys. There's 11 players. There's 10 players you need to... Uh, when you defending, 
there is 11 players you're playing against so you knew you need to defend against them and remember it's not only those players you need to defend against you need to defend against the space also look I think so there I managed to get a ball with Virgil van Dijk Yeah, as you guys can see, I'm switching back and forth. Offside traps, strike a drop back. As you guys can see, this guy's frustrated. I put him, because why? I put him in a negative mindset also. The offside trap, applying pressure, switching back and forth. Trying to give the opponent nowhere to go. Look, this opponent I took notice, you see you guys also must take notice, try to read opponent, take notice of his tendencies. Look, he likes going down the wing, you'll see again here. See, he went down the wing, he almost scored. But I defended that here. Again, corners, I'll repeat to you guys, so select the player here. As you guys can see, it won't happen all the time. Look, I selected Virgil van Dijk. I'm trying to defend. As you guys can see, look. I'm lined up there, if I look I'm trying to get the ball out this way, as you can see my controller, but look he managed to score, so it will happen sometimes guys, it will happen sometimes, see here I selected this player here, why, I'm defending this area, remember empty space you guys need to defend the areas, that's why I selected him. Now I'm running that side because I'm defending that area and I'm trying to anticipate where is he going to go next. That's why I switched to that player. Now again, I switch back to him. See, now he's going that side. You see your opponent's body language. Now you see I switched that side. As you guys can see, look here. I switched to this player. I'm second man pressing this player. I'm trying to second man press Virgil van Dijk. So you guys see, second man press. You guys need to use it now. Quickly switch to that player. Apply Virgil van Dijk under pressure. Switch to that player there. Then I quickly switch to him. Now I switch there. As you guys can see, anticipation. I switch to that player. Now Kafu, as you guys can see, look how I put him on a negative frame of mind. That's why he's panicking and rushing like that. And I managed to win the ball over. Yeah. Again, switching back and forth, going back. Anticipation, as you guys can see. Look, second man pressing with my center backs. And look, it managed to put him under pressure. But I wouldn't recommend you guys switch with second man press with your center back. That was accidentally. But look, that, if you go back, look there. This player here is applying pressure on that ball over there. As you guys can see. And he's a center back, which I recommend you don't press with your center backs but yeah I'm, I'm doing it as you guys can see and look it's helping he's applying pressure on that player there and Virgil van Dijk is patiently waiting to get the ball so you see I'm applying pressure with a center back which I recommend you guys don't do but in certain situations like that I had to so I, I did it look then all of a sudden he got nowhere to go he runs into Virgil van Dijk I win the ball over as you guys saw there. Yeah, again, I'll repeat myself. Strike a drop back, offside trap. And when you use offside trap, I don't use it always in the right way, but I'm start to make it a habit. When your opponent's recycling, let your use offside trap so your players can push upwards. Recycling, and when your opponent's giving you his back. That's when you want your players to push forward. So remember the two important times use offside trap. Use your imagination, guys. When your opponent's giving you his back, number one, and when your opponent is recycling the ball. That's when you use the offside trap. See, yeah, I took notice of his tendencies. Look, he's going down the wing. Yeah, I think I made a huge mistake. I should have run diagonally because then I'll cover more space. But instead, I'm not doing it properly. I never run diagonally and look what happens. I should have run more towards that side. Look. He ends up scoring. But you'll see there's another. See, I took notice that was one of his tendencies. You guys see. So I took notice he's doing that. He likes running down by the wing. Yeah, anticipation. I managed to get a ball because I knew what he was going to do. It's all about that anticipation, reading your opponent before he's going to make a move. See here, yeah, he's trying to round down the wing. He thinks he can get me again with us. Instead, I'm trying to track him here properly. They're switching back and forth. You see, I got him here. 
I kill anybody's tendency what they want to do. Yeah, as you can see, I'm going back. There, I already anticipated what's he gonna do, my opponent. Look, switching there. I see this player here is running. I see this player here running, so I know he's the, the threat now. So now I need to switch. I quickly switch to Virgil van Dijk, right stick switch. That's how you see right stick switching is important. Look there. No, no, no. That's a L1 switch, I think. Let's just go back and try and read here properly. No, that looks like an L1 switch, guys. It's not even showing. Is the L1 switch or what? But then there, you see I managed to get a ball over. Striker drop back, offside trap. Here he's going now. Now I need to defend this properly. I can't run after the ball. Switching back and forth, switching on my right back. Now I see he's coming towards the side. I switch with Virgil van Dijk. I stand my ground and I get the ball. Remember, if your opponent's coming towards you, don't run after the ball. Stand your ground. Like what I did there and I got the ball. You know what I'm saying? Okay, guys, I got more examples after here. Okay, guys, have a look here. I also want to show you guys when's the right time to tackle. See, look, I'm watching my opponent, seeing what he's doing. I'm trying to track the, the, the run there. As you can see, I tracked the run there. There was when I got a ball. Okay, have a look here. He selected that player. You see, the only time, listen to me carefully here. The only time you're aggressive is when you're close to your opponent and you know you can win that ball. Like here, watch my controller. Look, I'm murdering my opponent with a slow jockey. And I'm second man pressing at the same time. There, all of a sudden, I use a fast jockey. I can see, you know, there I can get a ball. I press the tackle button. I got the ball from my opponent. Yeah, same procedure. I switch to that player there. I just want to also show you guys here. Yeah, a, a while I was using the fast jockey. Oh wait, it wasn't here. Yeah. But anyway, I selected Virgil van Dijk. Accidentally, I'm second man pressing with that player. Then there, I switched to him. I think that was a L1 switch, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, L1 switch. Tackle, I got the ball. You see, I'm aggressive when I'm close to my opponent. Yeah, switch to Roberto Carlos. I can see, you know, there's a chance to win the ball. I'm aggressive. Press the tackle button. I won that ball over. Yeah. I'm watching my opponent, you see where his body, where your opponent's body is positioned. That will determine where he can move from there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, look, I switched to Virgil van Dijk. I'm using the fast jockey for a while because I'm outside the box. I'm not inside the box. The fast jockey, do not use it inside the box. Use it outside the box only. There, as you can see, my left stick is pointed in that direction. As you guys can see. Left stick is pointed in that direction. The opponent is also going towards that direction. So you guys see, you guys need to read the opponent properly. There, as you can see, press the tackle button. I won the ball successfully here. Look, I'm applying pressure on my opponent. Look, I select that player there. Second man will press with that player. The moment I see there's a chance to get a ball, I go in all out. As you can see, I'm using the fast jockey there. Look there. Pressing the tackle button, my left stick is pointed in that direction and I'm applying second man press. As you guys can see, she's applying pressure and I'm going with this player towards the ball carrier. I'm going to mark him and watch, I'm going to win that ball over. Got no time for games and there I won the ball over. As you guys can see here, look, I must time the tackle. Look how stupid is this. I switched to that player, that's how you see, if you don't time tackles properly, this is what will happen. Look. How I must time the tackle. Look where the, my a player ends up going. Now what if. Let's imagine. What if my opponent's player was here. Another player. Gone through on goal. Gone through on goal. But thank God Roberto Carlos is there. And look. I'm running back. Tracking what's he going to do. There. 
switched to Virgil van Dijk accidentally. I'm second man pressing with that guy, but look, he's applying a little pressure. I switched towards him. There, I'm running back. I'm watching this player here he selected, you know, who was basically running. So you guys see, I'm going back, I'm tracking him. There, I intercepted the ball. Interception, you see, anticipation is key. Yeah, switching with Virgil van Dijk, watching that guy. Covering Mbappe at the same time. Uh, making sure Mbappe don't exploit the space. And also watching this runner here. And look, stand my ground. I, anticipate, I anticipated where the ball was going. I intercepted it basically. Yeah, switch to that player. Quickly switch to Virgil van Dijk. Trying to mark the ball there. I mistimed it again. You see when you mistime tackles. But there, I managed to get a ball. So you see guys, make sure... You time your tackles and you don't just spam the tackle button and hoping and praying you're not there, you're gonna get the ball. Time it, make sure your player is aligned with the opponent who has the ball. I'll put also a video on my tackling on how I tackle like a pro and that, uh, I made a video uh, a few months ago. But anyway, you guys see the logic behind it. Make sure you don't miss time the tackles. Okay guys. Here are some more examples. I want to show you this team I'm facing. Look there. He has a brilliant team. This Haaland especially is dangerous. This Ronaldinho is one of a kind. But look how I defend against him. There he has a ball with Ronaldinho. I'm switching there as you can see. I'm uh, ma making sure you know there. I don't give him room to breathe and I'm watching that Haaland there. Switch to Virgil van Dijk, second man pressing, going back tracking Haaland. As you can see. They're going back, second man pressing, switching for Virgil van Dijk. They have managed to get a ball. Yeah, I always talk about offside trap and strike a drop back. See, when your opponent has no option and he's going backwards or recycling a ball, that's a win for you. Remember that. Look, what I'm doing. Look, I'm forming a nice wall. I told you guys about those imaginary lines. Look, this area is covered. You see, he can't exploit this area. That's why, why you think he's going back. You guys see. Pass to that player, I switch there, second man pressing as you guys can see. Look, uh, the activate striker drop back, look switching to Roberto Carlos, see. From there switching to that player, second man pressing, as you guys, guys can see, switching again, look. I'm, I'm literally like putting him in a negative mindset like how I did with the other opponent. Look. Going back, you, you see what passive ag aggressive defending is very important. See there, he's doing skills with Ronaldinho, he's going back. Look, he doesn't literally know what to do. Because um, the areas what he wants to exploit, I'm covering that area as you guys can see. Look, I'm switching one way, watching my controller. And look um, how I went to that play, I'm covering, I'm trying to cover that area there, I got the ball. As you guys can see, but I made a silly mistake. Now it's time to defend again. Switching with Virgil van Dijk, covering Haaland. There I got the ball, interception. Haaland's not going anywhere. I got the ball from Haaland. Hey look, he's going down with Ronaldinho. I'm chasing him with Kafu and switching to Virgil van Dijk. Switching back to Kafu. There I got the ball, as you guys can see. Yeah, I just want to say, you guys, look there, I'm going with Kafu, I switched to Virgil van Dijk. After that, from there, I hit him with a surprise, you see, I switched to Virgil van Dijk. From there, L1 switch to Kafu, and I got a ball. I only L1 switch when the opponent is close to me with the ball. That's the purpose of L1 switching. Right stick switching, when your opponent is distributing the ball far and you're trying to anticipate where is he going to distribute the ball that's when you right stick switch look there I surprised him and I got the ball with Kafu there are more examples striker drop back I never use offside trap because I see he's pushing forward one way 
Almost got a ball with Kafu chasing back. As you guys can see, switching to Virgil van Dijk. So I make sure you know, hey, I'm not gonna give Ronaldinho free space in this area. He must work for the space. I'm gonna make sure I suffocate him. They, he passed there. They switched to that player there. I think so, yeah, the L1 switch, if I'm not mistaken, let's just check, check the controller, yes, L1 switch, I'm trying to anticipate, as you guys can see, there, okay, I'm looking at his body language, I saw, you know, that hey, he's received the ball, now he's going more towards this direction, you see, so you need to anticipate and look at your opponent's body language, which side he's going towards, there I go more towards that side there as you can see how my controller is pointed but I never time it I never position myself in the correct way and look that's why I say positioning is so important guys look here I think so I was supposed to go more towards if you look I was supposed to go more towards this side then you know going for the tackle but instead I never do that that's how you see positioning is very important especially even when you tackle and all of that corners same methods guys the way i defend my corners as you can see i switch over Virgil van Dijk there i actually managed to get a ball see because he's taking too long and look with a player lock i'll make a video soon on that look he play a lock he passed to that player he's taking too long with a player lock i managed to get a ball over yeah as you can see from the word go i'm defending before he gets into my box look switching one way there i'm switching with that player why am i switching with him to say hello i'm present in this game and look i'm going back second man pressing they're yeah, switching with Virgil van dyke second man pressing always tell people a lot of people don't do this here when your opponent is near your wing switch to your center back like how i did second man press with your right back or left back and look, you're killing two birds with one stone. You're covering this area here. So if there's any players around this area, it's covered. And you're applying pressure on the ball. All I always tell people to do this, say. Eh? They look, see, with second man press also, I'll teach you guys another trick. Look, I'm second man pressing. Well, watch my controller then. When I see I'm near the ball, while I'm second man pressing, I'm near the ball all. Then I quickly, L1 switch. Look at my controller. Yeah, as you guys can see, look at L1 switch and, and I'll try and win the ball over. Again, L1 switch. If you guys pay attention to my controller. L1 switch. There, I won the ball. I actually got the ball out of danger. As you guys can see. So second man press, do this here. Like what I did there. When you see, you're not your second man pressing and there's a chance. You're so close towards the ball holder. But you can't win the ball over the second man press. L1 switch and get the ball from your opponent. There. That's what I did, you guys saw. So second man press is also useful in that kind of manner. There, as you can see, tracking Ronaldinho, switching with Virgil van Dijk. Yeah, I think so. I made a small error. Let's see. I think so. I conceded. Yeah. Look. Not timing my tackles, guys, like I spoke in the previous segment. Look, I switched with him. I should have switched to Virgil van Dijk. I should have go back, then stand my ground, slow jockey, and wait for him to come towards me, and then hit the tackle button. But instead, I never do that. Like, you see, even now, what am I waiting for? I should have hit the tackle button, go run towards him, hit the tackle button, and then, you know, get the ball. Maybe go in this direction. Hit the tackle button and try win the ball. But instead, I never do that there and I ended up scoring a goal. That's why you see, guys, there's a time to be... When you be passive is when your opponent is far from you. But when he's near you, be aggressive and get that ball. See, I never do that. And I conceded, guys. You see, silly, stupid mistake from me. There, as you can see... Strike a drop back, but I never use offside trap. See, the moment kickoff start, you must make sure you use offside trap, and that's when you start defending. I told you guys when to use offside traps. 
Yeah, look, he ended up quitting the game because why? He was literally frustrated because of the way I basically played and how I was, uh, how I was defending. So yeah, guys, you see, these little things makes a big difference in defending. Guys, this is King Sunny's footage. This is something I didn't know. This is on how to anticipate skill moves. Yeah, what King Sunny is saying? Anticipating skill. So yeah, what you have to do in this situation? What he's trying to say? Yeah, this player, yeah, Yuan Crave, he's anticipating and predicting he's gonna do a step over straight. So what he does? Watch his controller. Yeah, it's on the fast jockey. Look. So, and look where his controllers pointed. So, it's all about passive and aggressive defending. So, what's he gonna do here? Just uh, listen here carefully. He's gonna go back. Because then when your opponent does the skill move, you'll be able to anticipate what skill move and he won't be able to beat you. So, when you go back, that means you're being passive. So you can anticipate the skill move. Watch, he goes back. He gives the opponent a little space so he can do the skill move. Then from there, he's aggressive. Just watch, and he's also second man pressing and all of that at the same time. He anticipated it, he gave the opponent some space and there, look, he managed to get the ball with the same playstyle I also told you guys about in the beginning of the video anticipate plus if I'm not mistaken so you guys see that's how you uh, basically uh, defend uh, skills for example you be passive you go back you give your opponent a chance to do the skill move whether it's uh, elastic or reverse elastic you be passive step one step two the moment he execute the skill move that's when you aggressive and you launch in that, uh, you, uh, you know, you go forward and you launch that tackle and there you won the ball over. This is something I struggle with to defend. Uh, sorry about that, guys. Something I struggle with to defend skill moves. But there you have the answer, guys. And go subscribe to King Sunny's channel. Check out his latest, uh, his latest defending video also as well. So you guys can also learn a little bit more. Okay guys, that wraps the end of this video. I also mentioned in the video about the ball. Do not chase it, do not worry about focusing on a ball in game. Discipline guys. Remember if you chase the ball, what's gonna happen? You're gonna overcommit, you're gonna open up space. I also explained it in my other defending video. So you do not want to chase this ball. Discipline or else if you guys don't have discipline, forget about this ball, do not chase it. Huh? throw it one side do not worry about chasing it if you guys don't have discipline you guys see this belt i'm gonna catch you guys one by one if you guys are my students discipline guys so yeah guys this wraps the end of this video if you guys learned something from this video smash a like subscribe to the channel turn on notifications also thank you guys we on 1.5 thousand subscribers at the moment thank you for all the support guys thank you for everything now guys, if you guys want to learn something about the tech and take your tech to the next level, I suggest you click on this video to learn the 5 common mistakes you guys are frequently making in game. Anyways guys, catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.